Hey everyone, I thought this would be a fun video and let me know if you like it. By the way, hi, my name is Irit. I would love for you to subscribe, like this video, leave me a comment and join the watercolor fun. So I know that tutorials are huge on YouTube. They are very, very popular and I have to say I have not followed exactly step-by-step -step tutorials. I tend to have kind of, I don't know, uh, the rebel within. It's like, I don't want to do what you're doing, so don't tell me to do it. And I take a lot of online classes. And also there, I really like to learn techniques as opposed to just follow a step-by-step -step tutorial. However, I thought I would give it a go and see how I feel about it, if it was easy to follow. So I hope you will find this video useful. You know, maybe you have also kind of been reluctant to try these, or maybe you're curious about uh, certain tutorials. So yeah, let's get to it. I searched online on YouTube and I typed in watercolor autumn landscape or something like that and I picked the three most watched videos. You might get slightly different results if you do your own search. I tried to kind of choose uh, those only in watercolor that were my most enjoyable loose style. So the first video is by Ekaterina Smirnova and she has a beautiful YouTube uh, channel. She does lovely watercolor paintings. And this one was actually the first one I made because this was the most watched video. But I have to say it was also the most challenging one of them all. I would not recommend this for a beginner. I mean, obviously you could try this, but I feel one needs quite a bit of prior knowledge before going into a project like this. And even for me, it was kind of challenging. I, I still find it challenging to paint trees in a way that I really, really like. Uh, that was one of the motivations to create this video because I wanted to see what I could achieve by following these super successful popular videos. So I found this one to really be the most challenging. It is also the most complex one when it came to the composition and uh, also just the layers here, the intensity of color, the different techniques. There was quite a lot going on here. I did enjoy this, but I actually enjoyed the other two tutorials more. So Yes, I would recommend this if you are quite comfortable with basic watercolor techniques, basic perspective. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I also found the pace to be quite fast. I had to pause it and go back quite a few times. I would really love to hear your opinion about such tutorials, if you try them, if you enjoy them, or if it's just something you enjoy watching. Many times I just enjoy watching and I don't actually paint along. And yeah, this was, as I said, pretty much the first time that I really tried to follow along. So I will list you below uh, all the videos as well as all of the uh, products that I'm using, the watercolors and the brush. I have to say, I really love this brush. This one is from one of the Escoda sets designed or chosen or curated by Alvaro Castanet. Gosh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name. I, I should really <laughs> learn it finally because I seem to use um, his brushes quite often. But you can see it's like this mop brush. It's quite big. I think the set comes with one that is even bigger. And even though my paper is not so big, it actually worked really well and you can get also really fine lines with it as well as those bigger strokes. It carries a lot of water, but yeah, you can still get that nice uh, point. So I really, really enjoyed using it. The paint I wanted to use is by 
Aquarius. I think it's actually a mixture. I made a palette that is a mixture of Aquarius and a little bit of White Knights because I have uh, full pans from both of these brands and I, I really enjoy using them. They're beautiful, beautiful paint. I'm very into granulating colors and I'm also using rough paper here. So that combination always gives very pleasing results in my opinion. Adding some details, as I said, this was quite challenging to follow, but uh, it is a really well shot tutorial. It's very pleasing to the eye to watch her videos. And I definitely appreciate that it's, she has a very, you know, clean <laughs> table. <laughs> She's always a struggle for me. Uh, there are only five colors, I think. So you won't need like a huge palette to follow along. And I think with all of the tutorials that I followed, you can kind of tweak and make your own color choices. It's nothing too um, strict that you feel like you have to use what they use. I do like the, the colors that she chose for this. I think the um, uh, addition of that blue and black really adds a nice contrast to the warm autumn colors. So yeah, I will. It, it's definitely a color palette that I enjoy. And as for the result, um, yeah, I guess it was okay. It's not my favorite. Also, the process, as I said, was, yeah, it, it was quite challenging. Uh, I found the other two tutorials more enjoyable to follow, but I think also because they were simpler. So, you know, I'm guessing people tend to enjoy <laughs> doing things that are not a struggle and a huge challenge. Not that I don't enjoy challenges, on the contrary, but I think in this case, I was just hoping to kind of switch my brain off, follow a nice tutorial and have a nice painting at the end of it. <laughs> then again, maybe I'm just being naive. So moving on to the second one. And this time I decided to use this watercolor sketchbook that I actually made myself. And now I'm going to follow an Angela Fair tutorial. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I really enjoy her teaching style and I do have an affiliate link in the information box. If you'd like to take one of her courses, then using my link will support both of us. And I have taken most of her classes, I think. I really enjoy them. I learned so much from her and uh, I think she's a wonderful teacher. This is one of her, I think, older videos on YouTube. So the whole lighting situation is not as nice as the previous tutorial that I mentioned, but I still find it to be a great video. Uh, she does show two different examples. I think at least two. One is to how to paint winter trees. And then the second part of the video is about these autumn trees. Uh, what I liked about this, uh, first of all, I thought it was much easier to follow. It was still a bit challenging, I guess. There was also a few things to consider here, you know, how to paint the foliage, the colors of um, autumn, and then the whole composition of the drawing. But all in all, it was definitely simpler than the first one. And... I would definitely consider this to be more suitable for beginners. Um, I think my issue here is that I didn't love that yellow that I used. What was it? Did I bring some ye lemon yellow? I don't know. On screen, it looks so bright. It's just the, the colors here were not my favorite. And I was kind of trying to to mimic or copy what she was doing also when it came to color choices. And for me, a lot of the times that's really um, kind of um, make or break with my paintings, because if I'm not in love with the colors, I, I tend not to really enjoy the result. 
And also, I don't really feel that passion and enjoyment of coming back to a painting, looking at it and uh, trying to figure out what is needed. So that's probably something that I really need to pay attention to. And even if I am following tutorials, still go for my own colors, color choices, color palette, because it, it does seem to be a main issue for me. And I think that's probably one of the reasons I didn't kind of fall in love more with the process of painting this. That yellow really, <laughs> really bugs me. I think I just prefer my autumn colors to be really warm, focus more on those reds and really, really warm yellows, even touches of pink and then of course purple purple and violet I do love combining those and here it was just too much of that lemony yellow and green and yeah I, I but it, it was still fun I really find trees to be challenging I actually took one of Angela's courses that focuses on trees and I need to go back into it and try again it's just like all the elements seem to be a challenge how to get the right texture how to get the right edges and especially sometimes that area where the trunk meets the foliage seems to be a, a real challenge for me but yeah I really what I felt enjoyable about the process of following uh, Angela's tutorial was that I could kind of follow it but also do my own thing and personally that is something that always appeals to me because as I said I I have that <laughs> I don't know that built in I don't want to do what you tell me to do or I want to do it my way and not your way even though th sometimes that would be like a really stupid attitude when you're learning something from someone who knows so much more than you do um, yeah but what can I do so I always try to find like my way like to, to take away the techniques to take away the teaching and still try to implement it in my own way if that makes sense so yeah but I found this tutorial was great there was a lot of about um, color and uh, a bit perspective and just how to use color to create you know that perspective of having certain trees closer to you and then uh, some are more in the back so there's a lot to cover even when you're teaching something that wouldn't con be considered like the most complicated even though yeah landscape is such a big topic and autumn landscapes are you know a topic within that topic so there's always a lot to cover but I thought Angela's tutorial did such a great job with kind of finding that middle ground of um, teaching quite a bit in a way that is non-threatening um, I, I think easy to follow even if the result is not incredible <laughs> and um, yeah and and still kind of let you do a little bit of your own thing like you let you make some of your own uh, choices and decisions and have fun I think another thing that wasn't great I think the paper here I'm not even sure which paper it is for this sketchbook I bound it myself and I just used a bunch of papers that I had so I don't even know what it is but it's not and I didn't love it here I felt I was really struggling with that tree and this is also where the point that I kind of went off on my own thing and I thought I would try to add some more texture with this sponge and it did work to some extent but yeah you know that's what sketchbooks are all about to make fusses and I don't know who I was watching that said that you have to go in being prepared to fail oh I think it was the mind of watercolor because I was also he also I found also a video of his that was kind of like a spontaneous um, autumnish 
<laughs> landscape and yeah he was talking about if if you go into a painting you have to be ready to fail like try things and then fail so I would consider this one um, a successful failed experiment <laughs> in painting <laughs> some trees. But yeah, I did really get into it and really enjoyed it. So all in all, I think this was a really nice tutorial. Now, the third one that I followed, uh, I'm just adding some finishing touches. So I don't think I have a lot to say about this. But oh, here, there we go. So the third one was more, I, I guess, basic in the sense that it, he only showed how to paint like a standalone one tree standing alone. So in that way, it was uh, easier to follow. Although I do prefer to follow tutorials where I feel like at the end I have kind of something to show for it and not just a, like a whole finished painting, even if it's a bad painting, <laughs> as opposed to like one tree. So that's what I kind of tried to do following this tutorial. You can see it's the Jeff Kersey, I think his name is, Watercolor Techniques, and he shows how to paint uh, summer trees and then autumn trees using exactly the same techniques but different colors. The tutorial is really very beautifully filmed. So you can see the artist and then you, you get a really great view of what he's doing. It was obviously uh, professionally done. And the explanations are very clear. The demo is really nice. However, when you attempt this yourself, it's not as easy. <laughs> which <laughs> I always laugh at myself when I say these things because obviously, you know, we're talking about people here who have been painting for decades. Developing such skills takes years and years and hours and hours of practice. So... Obviously, it's not so easy, but sometimes, you know, you watch someone do something and you're hoping <laughs> that there is some <laughs> some trick, some sort of loophole hole, some loophole <laughs> that will allow you to get great results like they get. And it's never that simple, but I still learned quite a bit from that video. It was a really nice technique to watch. It does require um, good control of the amount of water that you hold in your brush. Also, the brush that you use and the paper that you use uh, makes a difference. But he gives some really great pointers in that tutorial. So I really highly recommend checking it out. My kind of issue with such tutorials, not that I think they are not important or great to follow, is that I, I always want more. You know, I want, don't show me how to just paint one tree because there's never just the one tree. Show me how to put it in a scene. And that's not something against this tutorial because you can find then other tutorials that teach you all those things that I mentioned. But I guess I'm just... I just want it all. <laughs> I want it to be easy <laughs> and I want it to be simple and I want to sit down for my short amounts of painting times and create something beautiful and not feel frustrated. Is that so much to ask people? <laughs> so <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, I did find his technique interesting and very effective. So I will definitely incorporate some of the things that he showed in that video into future paintings. I do highly recommend. I kind of, I guess I would recommend all three that I did, although the first one to me is the least, it's not as meaty as the other two when it comes to the actual technique. It's kind of more, look what I'm doing and do the same without really explaining how to get there. I hope that makes sense. Again, I would really be interested to know your thoughts about this. And I know a lot of you paint in watercolor and I know a lot of you are also beginners. So 
please let me know what you think about YouTube tutorials <laughs> and uh, which ones you like to follow and if you find them to be enjoyable or more a source of frustration or if you just enjoy watching because it's fun. I mean, I know I do. So yeah, I'd love to know. Um, value. Value is such an interesting topic. Everyone keeps going back talking about value and yeah, there's no getting around it <laughs> that it's quite an important thing in painting. And you see me now getting lost in the details of the foliage of the tree and forgetting about my trunk that is looking very, very in need of some blending. But I'll get there and I'll fix it. Uh, as I said, it was just fun. And I really like tutorials that kind of you know, you, you watch them, you watch the artist, but then you kind of go on your own and you get into the zone and you feel like you have somewhat of a clear idea what you want to do or what you want to try, but then also continue to explore on your own. So I'm going to just, I think, even speed up even more this part of the video and I'll show you at the end kind of the end result of these three. Again, I would love for you to subscribe and let me know in the comments what you think and if you intend to try one of these tutorials and if you would like to see more videos like this exploring the different things that YouTube has to offer. Uh, it was really fun to make and all in all at the end it did get me more into trying to improve my skills of painting autumn landscapes or autumnal landscapes. I love the season this time of year and I love the colors. For me it's a lot more appealing than just green green green. I'm in Europe so most of the time it's green 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 but <laughs> this time of year everything changes and it's just beautiful and I would really like to play some more in my journals and sketchbooks with my watercolors in autumn colors. The last thing I want to do in this quite long video is to take a look at the finished paintings. And this is such an important part of the process and I hope that you will do the same for yours. So this was the finished painting after following the first uh, Ekaterina Smirnova tutorial. I found it very challenging. What I loved about it was the color choices and that's kind of what I took away from that tutorial with me. I really love here the use of not a lot of yellow, mostly even going into reds and some oranges. Orange I'm always a little bit, I don't know, I guess ambivalent about that color. I guess it depends on the exact shade of orange. but. The beautiful use of red here, that fiery warm red with the blue and black. I really, really enjoyed that combination and I hope I can also use it in future paintings. So that was kind of my takeaway from that tutorial. I probably spent the least amount of time doing my own thing on that painting just because I felt the tutorial was a little bit more rigid. For some people that might be great. Uh, going now into the Angela Fair one, I love how actually the grass at the bottom turned out. If you look at the colors there from that more yellow to gold yellow, green gold to those deeper shades of green and then a little bit of uh, purple. It's a color by Aquarius that is quite similar to Moon Glow. Um, I really liked how that turned out. So I do really, really enjoy that flowing type of painting that is more loose. Loose painting is what I want to say, which is one of the things that uh, Angela Fair is known for. The foliage was quite challenging. I didn't like that very lemony yellow, but uh, all in all, this was fun. And now the last one. This feels overworked to me. So I much prefer that loose style 
to this, what I got here, but I do think that his technique of creating the foliage is really interesting and um, I'll probably go back to some elements of it. I liked starting with that one layer of lighter color and then coming in with a darker color uh, as opposed to just like starting with a bunch of colors. I, I see the logic in it and I can also see how that would make the tree look attractive. <laughs> so yeah, I'm definitely happy that I watched that tutorial. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will feel inspired to grab your watercolors and try your own autumn landscape. See you soon. Bye bye.